Thank you, Mr. Branson. I think that uh, on behalf of our industry, we can say that we are ready to respond to your call of taking action. We can do our best, but we cannot be left alone. In the sense that the message to my banks should be clear and net from the European institutions. Banks are under huge pressure from regulation. We are coming out from a huge crisis which has changed our way of doing banking, has modified the consumer behavior, and we have to be put in the condition to do our job, which is lending to the real economy. If our banks will not receive a clear message from the European Parliament, from the European Commission, and from member states, it will be difficult to put together a pan-European initiative we will not be in the condition to move forward. So, as I said at the beginning, we will all succeed or we will all fail. Private capital is something, I think, very helpful, but it's very complicated to put energy or electricity to the mechanism. First of all, we have to understand how the mechanism is working, and then how this mechanism can be implemented at the, in one go in all the same region of uh, Europe. We are trying to do a lot of work, and I would like just very briefly to explain what we are trying to do. Well, it was clear from the very beginning that working as a mortgage industry was not enough. We need to, have, uh, to find a good company and uh, people with the same enthusiasm and people able to accept a compromise. So when we have launched the initiative, we have selected three group of people. The finance group, energy efficiency expert group, and then the valuers and data. Because those three things, they have to work all together in parallel and at a certain point going together. What we need from banks? From banks, we have tried to analyze their business model, how they lend money, what are the critical points, and how they can finance energy efficiency. We have done a survey. I think that all of you have a nice uh, leaflet in your uh, folder, which is the result of our analysis. Well, we discover a lot of interesting things, that banks are willing to play a role. Sometimes they are doing things in different ways, and they need a leadership. And they have to be in the condition to be comfortable to disclose data and to change their business line. So we find ourselves in a chicken and egg story, how we can have incentive and having banks on the same moment starting to work. Because the incentive is the consequence of data or market analysis. So that's where the enthusiasm can play a role and we can bridge with this, but it's not enough. We need also a strong support which is on political willingness, but also maybe to some kind of guarantee that can bridge the moment from now till the banks will be fully operational with this new product in their balance sheet. But what is this new product? Allow me to, to stress what are the two leverages that we would like to use. We believe that energy efficiency has a strong impact on two risk parameters for banks. So we'll be impacting the major problem of banks, cost, capital cost. When you have a mortgage on the, on the balance sheet on the belly of the bank, you have two risks. One, the first risk is the gentleman who got the money will not pay back his mortgage and will disappear. This is called the probability of default. The second risk is that uh, when the, the, the bank will have access to the house, when they sell the house in the market, they will lose money. Those are the two risks of the bank. The question is, energy efficiency is improving this risk? Yes, because energy efficiency can improve the disposable income of the family, so will make every family more resistant to a negative cycle. We cannot save the world. We will not prevent crisis. We will not uh, ensure a job to everyone but we will give a bit of more money by improving the energy efficiency of the house in order to allow every family to react a bit better to a potential crisis. The second element is that the 
loan to value, which is the essential measurement of risk in a bank, so the ratio between the loan and the value, will be improved because the, val the value will increase. It's quite intuitive, but believe me, it's plenty of people that they tell this doesn't exist and is not uh, trackable, and we have to challenge to give answer to this answer, because this is a fair question coming from the banks, it's a fair question coming from the institution, and we have to uh, give an answer. What we are trying to do is to analyze the data available, and the data available are telling us something very interesting. I would like to say a few numbers that I can help. A Danish research is telling us that if you move your house from an energy efficiency category E, which is a common case, my house was that category E, and if you move this house to a category B, which is uh, possible, not impossible, that family can save in the life of the mortgage 24,000 of euro, 25, 24, sorry, is 66 euros per month. It's an amount of money that will increase the disposable income of every single family, improving their capacity to react to the crisis. On top of this, this addition can correspond to have an additional room on the house. So the, the family will be richer if the bank will intervene. Now, why the bank is so important? Because the bank will be in a very topical moment of the life of all of us. When you decide to buy the house, the house is empty. So the bank will be there and will propose you the right instrument to renovate your house as soon as possible, so increase the, sal the, the salary pressure, and make the house more resistant to a crisis. On top of this, our initiative has something special. Because at the end of the works, so we not only want to renovate the house, but we want to link the energy consumption of the house to the mortgage rate. So this house will become a driver of energy efficiency because the borrower, the family, will buy a low consumption fridge, a low consumption TV. So for 30 years, every single energy efficiency mortgage will guarantee energy efficiency to the union. That's something completely new, what is not in place in any country in the world, not even the US, because we have something special in Europe. We keep the, the mortgages in the balance sheet of the banks, which is very costly for our banks. But the bank has all the interest to have a good quality mortgages in their balance sheet, and most probably finance this with a cover bond. I know that the Danish community loves to do cover bonds. It's a, and I'm, I feel a bit Danish as well, because I mean, uh, um, but I mean, the cover bonds have the characteristic that uh, is on the balance sheet of the bank, and the bank can manage the mortgage in the long term. And long-term funding is what we need here. So what is the challenge? The challenge is uh, putting all these gentlemen in this room together and funding something which is aspirational. We, at the beginning, we wanted to design something which was based on the business model of some of you. We have to acknowledge that it is impossible to make a business model that will be functional for all of you in this room. So we went for a different solution. We want to have a principle-based solution. So we ask our finance group, our valuers, our um, energy efficiency to come out with a, a principle-based guidelines, which hopefully will be ready by December. This will be a bit uh, a Bible. We are in the house of the Pope, so I mean a Bible, where every single bank can give instruction to valuers and energy efficiency of what has to be done. And then we create some new rules. Let's uh, try to follow this diagram, which is a very aspirational. It's just an idea. But we want to improve the valuation of the mortgage. We want to create a new role, the energy efficiency expert. Because the bank cannot give you a lot of money. The money that the bank will provide the borrower will be a bit more, but the bank cannot jeopardize the risk profile. So it will be a limited amount. But the energy efficiency expert can make an assessment of 
also not only the private capital coming from the bank, but also the public uh, money coming from the state. So the renovation portfolio of the family is actually much bigger than the money coming from the bank. Just to give you the example in Brussels, when I ever renovated my house, I had no money from the bank, no extra money because we were not yet operational. But the city hall of Brussels is offering a lot of support for changing the heating, changing the window, and uh, fiscal reduction. So when you put all these elements together, your portfolio for renovation is quite large. And if we succeed in channeling all this extra money in the value of the property, our bankers are happy because the loan to value will be improved. I, I don't want to bother you too much with, because you are all aware of our initiative, but we are structuring our pilot phase. In the next 12 months, I have a difficult job. I have to go and speak to all my banks and convince them that what we are doing is right, is important, and I have to convince them to disclose with us two things. Brain capacity, intellectual input, so they have to help us in designing these guidelines. And secondly, they should help us in having data. But after 12 months, I have to ask even more to these banks. I have to ask them to test this product in the real life. So to change the business line, and I would like to express the thank you for the system providers that are helping us to design an IT infrastructure. I want to name them because uh, they had the courage to believe on my words, and I want to, to, to say that. It's TXS, European Data Warehouse, CRIF, uh, and Ipoport, who are really putting all the energy to design for the first time a common European infrastructure that can help banks to reduce costs. Because this mechanism will work out also if the banks will keep the cost of production down. And we have to build economy of scale. We have to build something which is working from Malta till the north of Sweden. That's the only way to make this cost efficient. Also because I tell you a secret. Banks are not making money with mortgages. Even though you can read this in the press, it's not true. The mortgage is a very interesting product because it's building a relationship of 30 years between the bank and the client. But it's not a profitable business. It's, it's a, a lot of capital cost for the bank, especially for the Europeans who don't have a friendly mail for the Mac, and we keep everything on balance sheet, and we use cover bonds and other instruments, but is a fundamental element of our economy. So please help me to give light to this initiative. I would like to stop here, and uh, I will ask all of you to help me to convince my banks. I would like to f finish my presentation by giving the, the floor to three gentlemen who will help me to give an overview of what's going on in Europe, what's going on in the US and the rest of the globe, and I would like to make a focus on Japan. I want to build a link between Campo Tosto, the little town in Abruzzi, and Tokyo. Because we don't have to reinvent the wheel. This mechanism is working in other places in the world. So sometimes it's enough to look what the others are doing and try to implement this in the common way with a European spirit.